Well, this video starts um, the first part of the chapter on hydropower. So this chapter, we're going to be reviewing a little bit of the state of hydropower in the world in the U.S., and then we're going to go over um, some of the basics behind its uh, technology. So to start off, um, in the 1930s, the United States was generating about 40% of its electricity by hydropower. In 2019, that number was about 6.6%. Um, in some other parts of the world, such as Norway, Nepal, New Zealand, and Canada, um, those countries generate um, on average more than 50% of their electricity by hydropower. Hydro is looked upon as environmentally friendly, but recently uh, it's been viewed as causing some environmental issues. And another aspect is that uh, hydropower has a large capital cost to get started, but then after it started, it has a low operating cost. This graph shows the average power production expense per kilowatt hour. So on the y-axis, you have cents per kilowatt hour, and on the x-axis, you have um, different types of uh, energy production. So you basically, you have hydro, in this case, compared to nuclear, uh, fossil fueled steam, and gas turbines. As you can see, um, each bar that indicates the total cost in cents per kilowatt hour is split up into three different segments. It's split up according to fuel, maintenance, and operation. And as you can tell for hydro, there is um, basically no fuel cost, right? Um, and then there is the operation and maintenance cost, which makes up the majority of um, the cost of running a plant. And as you can tell, the total is less than what is compared here to the other three. So it's a very cheap form of power. Uh, this is uh, a um, reproduction of the Hoover Dam plan form. Hoover Dam uh, has a total capacity of just a little over two gigawatts, right? So it's two gigawatts here. That power plant itself, um, on average, produces more than 50% of the energy needs for California, 25% for that of Nevada, and up to 20% of that for Arizona. It was built, I believe, uh, in the 1930s, and it is still a power plant that is uh, heavily dependent upon close to 100 years after its construction. Here's a view of it. I don't know if any of you have ever been to Hoover Dam. I have been once. It is quite a spectacular place to visit. I mean, when you visit this place and you're up here, you can just see how far vertical it is. It just It's, it's just an amazing view, aside from the fact that it's embedded into in a, a mountainous area that's very beautiful. Some other ones in the world. Um, I am probably not pronouncing this correctly, but Itepu Hydroelectric Power Plant. Uh, at the time, uh, prior to Three Gorges Dam, it was the largest in, in, the, in the world. Um, it had produced, it's a, a sort of split between Brazil and Paraguay. It produces a power that is six times that of Hoover Dam at about 12.6 gigawatts. So in Brazil, this particular power plant produces 25% of the power needs for Brazil and close to 80% of the power needs for Paraguay, where Paraguay gets about 100% of its uh, power generation solely from hydroelectric. And, um, and Brazil gets more than half of its energy from hydroelectric. Um, oh, I did notice a spelling error here. Sorry, that should be world, not word. Okay, moving on. Three Gorges Dam, this is now the largest in the world. Uh, it's been fully functional since 2012, it's completed in 2006. Huge cost, over 30 billion uh, US dollars for it. And uh, in 2018, it produced over 100 terawatt hours of total energy. Its capacity is nearly twice of that as the prior dam we were looking at, topping off over 22 gigawatts. That is 11 times the capacity of Hooper Dam. 
So uh, in this uh, chapter, we're going to be basically going over a few different things in something called hydro, uh, hydraulic analysis. Uh, the first step in hydraulic analysis is basically to look at an analysis of the penstock. The penstock is basically the fluid's path between the upper and lower water levels of a dam. And then step two is an overview of the characteristics of turbines suitable for different combinations of flow rate and elevation change. So basically we're going to be looking at um, the uh, overall um, uh, analysis, uh, basically using Bernoulli's equation for the penstock, and then following that analysis, we're going to be looking at a generalized, generalized view of different types of turbines that can accommodate uh, different power plants. So this is the end of the uh, first video for the chapter on hydropower, and we'll continue with the analysis in the second video to follow.